So our next speaker then is Candace. Uh, if you've been to any of our physical Cygnus cafes, you may have met Candace Paddock before, actually in the sanctuary. Candace is a wonderful lady. She's an intuitive, she's an author. Um, she definitely has inspired uh, messages, I suppose. Her inspirations come and she's she is just a very she's a joy a joy to to meet and and to listen to so i don't know if candace is already there is she Teresa? so welcome candace into the room then into our zoom room yeah hi oh it's a real pleasure to be here um very interesting times i I thought that I would do talk a bit, but if anyone wants to type in a question, perhaps Teresa could see if there's a good question later to for answering. So I, I channel angels, um, and I thought it to, as there's so much going on lately, that it would be interesting to just give some of their information. And so I will start with the solstice, what they said about every solstice, not just this solstice, but they said that's the universe's way of closing a door. So the door that they closed um, last night, well, that's closed, all right? So everything on that side is closed. You don't go back through that door. You can't get back through there. But at the same time, they open the new door. Um, so before it closed, I thought, well, what the heck is this? What are, what are we in now? They're going to close the door on this, but what are we in? It just looked like a room of people running around panicking and, and screaming. Anyway, so that's gone now. You can't go back. So the new door looks very determined, like everyone who was kind of done with that and wanted to move ahead, move ahead in a, a let's get this done. Is it the, the put up or shut up integrity? So we're walking into that room from the room of people panicking. And we're only a few hours into it, so this has got a ways to go until another eclipse sort of opens a new door. And I wouldn't want to be, this is a, this is a walk, walk your talk. So if you're gonna, if somebody like me, if I'm gonna say something about helping the earth, or I better be doing it myself. Um, okay, so uh, other than that, there's been a lot of, a lot of stuff happening this spring. Um, and it's all been for a reason. Uh, it, we know, you know, you notice the virus, the virus making people stay home. And the virus had a couple of jobs. I mean, as far as it was concerned, it's just to go around and, and it's almost like it was helping. It was on a mission to help people who had uh, sort of forgotten how to die. They didn't mind if they died, but they couldn't remember how to do it. And they, they've been helped. And it's difficult to talk about this without sounding heartless, but it's, I really felt that after all this, what we needed to do in our lives is to think about our own deaths. And, and that's just very personal for us, but it was a time to think about how we wanted to end our days here. And I think most people would say like of sound mind and body and maybe just lay down in bed and die, that kind of thing. But it, to make a real point of it to yourselves that you've thought about it, and that's the way, that's, that's some of our lessons, because we're sort of a generation younger from some of the very oldest people that are, have, been de have been killed by this. Okay, so that's part of it. So it was about dying, but it was also about locking everybody down. And when people were home long enough, changes started to be made. And the changes had to be made. So if you can imagine, like just uh, as, a, as a picture, not as a real thing, but if you were walking towards a cliff and you weren't changing your direction, how would you change that direction? Well, you start to get this, this kind of thing, and this is only number one in a series of events that are coming. This type of thing is devised by us for our own benefit to turn us aside so that we won't go over the cliff, but we're so close to the edge now we don't have time to make a gentle curve. We're just going to be pushed, pushed, pushed. 
this one, the next one, the next thing. It's like lining up events all the way up through, well, at least July next year, just to push us on a quick turnaround and, and just pick a new path, one that's not leading over the cliff. And it doesn't mean turning around and going backwards. It means finding a new path that we haven't went on before. Okay, so, so that's just the first thing. Um, one of the things that I like that turned out to be around my house, because I live right next to woods. Ah, I just lost myself, wait a minute. That's, okay, there I am. Sorry, I was fiddling around and then it just went. Um, so I live next door to woods. And I, for years, I, it's just been me and dog walkers on phones. And it's taken um, three months for the woods to be full of kids without their parents. So it started off with parents taking their, their kids in there, but now there's just gangs of children playing with this, just their phones to, to call home and say they're all right. Well, I've never seen that before in there. So that, for me, that's a real change. Okay, so stuff that's happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, on the earth healing front, there what used to be, the earth had a shield up, the shield came up out of Stonehenge, went around, went around the planet like this, went back in, in the Pacific, came up and circled around. And every planet has a shield to keep what's happening underneath that shield just for this planet and just for the people living on the planet. And, and that was fine, that was there for, for quite a long time. Uh, and then I have an earth healing group, that's an online Zoom group. And it was that we just, this Stonehenge was just ready to explode and explode in a way that would just, um, like if your pressure cooker blew up in your kitchen, you just had shards of metal everywhere. Uh, so we, we had to go down and change what was happening with the shield of the earth itself and made it, made it detached, made it relaxed, made it spread out. The ley lines are all changing. The energy centers are moving north up towards the Orkneys and the North Pole and Greenland and Northern Canada, Northern Siberia. So lots, lots happening. This is a, like a huge shift to, ch to change the energy out of Stonehenge, Avery, Silbury, which have been the Earth's major energy centers, and then just shift it up north, somewhere new. So, um, so that group, that's Earth Magic Healing Circle. If anyone is interested, uh, we have a Facebook page. And that's open to anyone who would like to do earth healing, just to join us twice a month. Okay, so that was one thing. And then the other thing, which was even more sort of an extreme change as far as I was concerned, is that all of this time, all, all of the entire time that we've been on this planet, it's been polarity of light and dark. And you had the angels of light and the angels of dark. And then I did write about this in one of my books. So I wrote about it in this book, if anybody ever bought that. I don't know if that's backwards. Look backwards to me. So on planet Earth today, I had the Archangel of Darkness had come through and written a whole chapter. And then about a week and a half ago, one of my angel guys goes, he just wants to have a word with you. And of course, my reaction to that guy trying to talk to me is just like, no, I don't want to talk to him. Um, but he came through and he just said, Basically, um, I'm going, you know, I'm just going to leave now. Me and all my, um, my team, we're, we're off now. And they left. So you have this whole uh, sort of like dark half of the universe that was just pushing energy, the dark energy into this planet left. I mean, this is almost an inconceivable change to me. And then you go back into my earth healing group and here's one of the youngest members. She said, I could see that people in their heads had like a dark spot in their head. And as we looked further into this, this was where they connected. Dark angels, dark spot in head, push energy in. So like this is, and when he left, he just turned off the switch. So now there's no more energy coming into that dark spot. And that dark spot, maintained the heart in a cage. So it was the head over the heart. So we are now in the process of having the heart uncaged and the head to be back in balance with that. It's, well, anyway, 
I got really excited by this because we all deserve to be treated with love by others. And this, the love was too hard to, almost too hard to get a hold of in the general population because people's hearts were in cages. Okay, so that was the most exciting thing for me. But you can see, we've got changes coming along that are of a magnitude that we can hardly imagine. And, and so, so you're left with like, wow, well, what do I do? Well, you come back to this, this thing about turning a corner, not going over a cliff. So any change that you have made since all this coronavirus started to lock us down, that was for the highest good. And you kind of know which ones they were, like walking more and not driving so much and uh, bicycling, those kinds of changes. It's like, don't give it up. Everything that you've made a change already that's for the highest good is like, don't give it up because you're going to have to change more. And these are the changes that you have to take with you. If you go back the way you were, we already said you can't go back. So you have to take these changes with you. And then your own personal journey will be more effective and easier for you. Uh, it's the people who can't change and can't adapt that will find this really hard. And now I think I could do questions. If, unless, yeah, questions, because that's sort of an introduction to just like what's happening now. And then the future is like thing after thing after thing after thing. Um, um, thank you, Candace. Um, one of the ones that's just come in is, could you just share the book again? Um, I think a few people are Did it come up backwards? No, no, it, it, we could read it fine. We just need to see what it's called again. Is that the first one I wrote? Planet Earth today. And can I just ask if you could give like one bit of inspiration from that book? Well, to do with this particular Archangel of Darkness guy, um, it was very clear. And it didn't, I did not get this overnight. This is, a, this is my journey of understanding. Um, was that in the very beginning, the, the creator created out of his heart all of the angels. So you can imagine all of the angels. And then half of them, uh, sort of almost the brave half, uh, volunteered to be the dark side. So you can imagine he's just as much as angel, just as much an angel of light as an angel of light. Except he's doing this dark stuff. And I mean, the dark people, the dark side, and the demons just set out to cause everybody misery and despair. And that is also a pathway to God. You can get to God through misery and despair because actually there is no other. Death. So whether you go through life happy and blissful and reach God at the end, that's the, there is nowhere else to go. So you can go through misery and despair and reach God or happiness and joy. So here he is, an angel of light, making everybody miserable. But it's just his job. So where, where are you? when you first sort of run into dark angels, you think they're so awful and scary and fearful and the, the stuff they do makes you afraid. It's just their job. It's almost like they have a time clock and they punch in and out every morning. Um, and, and in the end, I thought that's how I could cope with it better. But I also, then I, when he came along to say goodbye, it was because I understood that. So it seems like there was something else I was going to throw in there, but maybe somebody will ask the question that brings that up. <laughs> it's quite interesting because I was chatting with people last night about The Watchmen. Um, which is a, a it's a, a film and also a TV show with a, a similar kind of message. Um, well, one of the other questions that have just come in, um, I'm just going to summarise it. Um, and really, it's asking: Will healing ever be accepted by the mainstream? And our focus shifting from treating the symptoms to actually treating the root cause. Uh, okay, so this is, yes, and so you were asking me that and I was like watching what they're showing me and this is, um, that this will come about, but this is not going to be coming about in, a, in what we would consider a very happy way because it's almost like there will be enough, this is a big story about death that's coming up, but the, the, the enough deaths of people who are not using healing so that the proportion of people that are left alive that use it will be greater because they are using healing. Um, they are, I, I don't like 
this is my personal thing. And as they keep trying to get me to understand that a lot of people are going to die, and I don't like to talk about it. But when I say a lot of people are going to die, and if there's almost 8 billion people on the planet, and, and say a quarter of them died, or a third or a half, that's a lot of people to die. And that's the kind of figures they're talking about. And it's not because of war, and it's not because of pestilence. It's some. They said some will die pretty quickly because they're, like I said, the light switch has been turned off, and they were living on the energy that they were supplied by the dark, and they they won't have enough energy to live. So this is many reasons. Um, and when people die, people, one human soul, almost eight billion splinters, and then as they, um, so quite splintered. But as they die, that some of these splinters will go back and the individuals that are left will be stronger, stronger in humanity, less sort of thin on the ground, but they're with the, the amount of soul in their body, you could say. So, okay, did I answer that question about healing? The healing is almost, it's there because the other fails and people die in spite of it. Thank you. And um, someone's just asking another question around, could you share a little bit more around this shift in energy center and, and the lines, the ley lines? Well, it was just the ley lines, because you know, they used to just clump into um, Avery and Stonehenge and Silbury was a real engine driving that. And, and this is in the UK, there are other centers like this around the world. And uh, so what's going on, and take the Orkneys for example, it, what, it used to be at the Orkneys and then it shifted. Orkneys mothballed. So although it's, it was there and it was once working, then mothballed, so now it's been reawakened. So this kind of shift is reawakening things. Also having a bit of a major healing blast on the poles, the poles look a bit weak. So trying to strengthen a lot of this, strengthen the grids around the earth. There's been talk online of um, sun flares and the solar minimum, trying to make sure that uh, we've got enough protection up, as much protection up as healers can put up. Um, yes, so, so ley lines. So in the, yes, you're, you're all welcome to come because what we do in this earth healing, earth magic healing circle, is uh, I get people going, working on about the same job at the same time through meditation. And then, so we have been doing the ley lines and they've been reeling, repairing and reeling them out, but we kind of move on every week. So um, last time we were trying to get rid of a lot of the underground bunkers and things in the Salisbury Plain, but you know, taking the energy out of these so that the energy can flow through without getting stopped and diverted and so forth trying to take the energy out of some other things that major dams in China and HS2 and things that don't help the earth but just block the earth's flow, trying to make it stronger. So, okay, so you get all these um, energy lines. These are the ones that will now go through the Orkneys, a big center in Northern Canada, the Arctic kind of places that we wouldn't go now, but used to go, I'd imagine. And I haven't looked that closely at the Southern part of the ocean, but I imagine that it looks like it's crisscrossing almost at the South Pole down there for ley lines. Yes, so I wouldn't assume that anything that was is. It's this whole thing about, don't look back, it used to be there, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters behind you now. Um, all born to be here now, all born to be here, do this work now. Lead the way, younger people following, and um, just keep going. That's so interesting. I think, you know, we're all very much in flow because that really leads nicely into the next question, <laughs> which is, um, so individually and collectively, what can we all do to um, walk the happy path, I guess? Oh, well, some of this, you know, some of this is about, uh, you, what, okay, so in our cars, and if there are things that we have to do, you can't get to Harry Edwards without a car very easily. Um, but you can carbon offset all your journeys. Uh, so there's things like that that are sort of technical. The, the other things are to, to reduce the journeys and 
to try and find places locally. I mean, this would be wonderful economically for every town, is if you just started buying everything locally that you could. Um, and it's those airplane flights, you know. I live near Gatwick. It's been a heaven for three months because we had a plane a minute, you know, nonstop. So it's just to pull all of that back. So we know that those things are physical. And the earth healing, so I'm in um, one that I run and one that somebody else runs, which is really easy to go to somebody else's. And people are doing amazing things. Um, you know, the, the ability to reach between the earth and the heavens and bring that white light in and healing light. Uh, and I don't even know if they know they can do it before they do it, but I, I, I set people do it, to doing these jobs in my group they look at you a bit dubiously and come back and tell you very excitedly that what they did, they did amazing stuff. Riding on a dragon's back and pulling a ley line behind them to somewhere new. You know, they're having fun. So, um, yes, so it's the both halves. Do the energy work because the energy comes first and the physical comes second, but there's some of the physical stuff that we know that we need to do. The organic and the, we know, walking and bicycling, organic, shopping locally, offsetting carbon, plant more trees. Um, you, you know, you know what it is, it, it feels right. Protect the trees that are there. Wonderful. And what are you excited about? What am I excited about? Or they, what's to be excited about? What they're excited about. And I must say, they've been in a really good mood because I can just sort of flip back and see them. They're excited about us. They are excited that, that we, I mean, it's so long. We've looked like we were just gone, you know, over the edge of a cliff and the end, that everything that's wonderful would happen and, and we would just stand there and be not, not be part of it. And the thing about just sort of going for it with the virus was to, this is quite a big extreme thing. You know, you don't have a pandemic that often. So the human soul engages as an employee, like almost with a contract, this virus to come in and just say, you can help us by doing this. And, and doing this is not just helping people to die. It's, that was just like a side effect. It was make people change and make them sit in and sit down and change, sit in their houses and change. Although they do say that, you know, in the future, few months, you know, in the months ahead, we might look back on this and go, oh my gosh, all we had to do is stay home then, now look at it. No, it's not, it's not as smooth and, it's, it's not smooth and effortless, but there is the determination that we are going to do this. And it was that determination that sort of sent the dark side packing with the, my job here is done. And he's kind of packing up on more planets than ours. And he's getting in a real... Um, going, to, going to go back to source, and I don't think it'll be uh, so so very long. Like the universe has existed a long time, and then this will be a shorter time that it goes to the end. And that would mean the universe finishing in light, which was, would be a nice result. I think everybody here would like that. So, yeah. So okay. So that's what they're excited about. They're excited about us making a plan, being determined, sticking to it, and almost like being, being as strong as we are, and we're pretty strong, to say, okay, bring it on. Just bring on that, the next thing, and the next thing is environmental. Rain at the wrong time, sun at the wrong time, rain in the wrong quantities. Whatever it is you need, you're not getting it. You're getting the thing you didn't need. So that's coming up. And then there's more stuff after that. And uh, more people dying for this and that reason. So that's kind of it. Can you share anything around the uh, future generations that are coming through and how we are inspired by the children of today and tomorrow? Well, yes, well, they're just amazing, um, especially all the ones born after, um, after 2012. And, uh, and so really really powerful 
powerful beings coming in and taking a body. You know, some of these big archangels, I've run into them out and they're like, hey, wait, wait a minute, you're two years old and you're Archangel Metatron? <laughs> There's other down here, they can come in and they're in here because this is the time to come. Um, this is when they can um, help run into people that are have elementals. They were our elementals and the human soul is very good about getting in help. And so they say, yes, you can have a body, but because we know that we need all the help we can get. So these children that are coming in have a real earth connection. And, and really, if we don't keep the earth as a livable home, then we have nowhere to live. You know, we're not going to go live on a space station. Um, there's a lot of talk like the Middle East. There's a lot of people live in the Middle East, but it's already got those days that are too hot to support human life. You could have the Middle East emptied of life as a desert. So this is where, if we can't take care of this planet, it's, it's sort of our end. It's not the end of the planet or the other animals, it's our end. And these children that have come in are connected enough to not let that happen. And I don't think they will let it happen. It'll be okay. I think it'll be okay because the dark side packed up and left. So if you're looking at anybody and you think, I think that guy's a dark guy. Well, I just can never judge it. You don't know what people are here to do. And you don't know what effect they're going to have in the long run. And you just really to just don't judge it. Wonderful. Thank you. Any final thoughts just as we're wrapping up? Yes, it's like, please come and join me on the Earth Magic Healing Circle. And that is on my web page has the link to Eventbrite. So it's easiest to put it on Eventbrite. And it's on a Facebook page. Because we reckon that if we can get 100 people, that uh, it's exponential, 100 times 100, 10,000. It's the equivalent of 10,000 healers sitting together. Um, and then no, we were taking the costs. We're taking the money. 10 pounds ahead costs. And then after... Uh, we met our costs. We were going to have um, donations for smaller earth healing projects. Okay, so that's one thing because that's what that's what I'm interested in. Uh, what else is there? Oh, it's like you know I'm listening all the time, and they're like, people should be of good heart. This sounds dire. Everybody's going to die. It's not everybody's going to die. It's uh, it's more of a way of bringing us back bringing us back from the edge and combining these souls that it's and being stronger, that people will be stronger when there are fewer people on the planet. And they're like, it looks like, oh yeah, they're like, you, it looks like you've done it. After all this time of teaching on the brink of, are they going to be on, on the knife edge? Are you going to go dark or are you going to go light? What's going to happen on planet Earth? Everybody's watching. Big audience out there. What's happening on Earth? Because it, I really felt all these times they would talk to me. It's like, whichever way the Earth goes, the universe goes. And it looks good. You know, it looks like, it looks like we might have done it. And that's through sacrifice and hard work and healing. I like listening. And, and love. No, they're very proud of us. It was so hard what we chose to do, which is in that book, which is wearing the blindfold so we couldn't see what was around us. Okay, so that's mostly it. More? Um, just I have a uh, plot. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few are just asking now, could you share the, the web page again? So if people want to join the group, what's the actual things that you need to type in. If they're on Facebook, it's Earth Magic Healing Circle. Um, and I my web page is candiscatic.com and I put a page up on that. And then on that page there's a link to Eventbrite. Lovely. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's see what's going on out there. I can hear grandchildren running around screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, um, thank you. 
back thank soon. Thank you Linda. so much. Thank you, Teresa. And thank you so much, Candace, as always. Um, just so interesting to spend time with you and so delighted that you were able to be with us today. Really, really appreciate it.